So now in this video, we're going to take a quick look at a Darlington pair transistor. This is a KSP13BU and so it's going to operate for the most part like a regular NPN bipolar junction transistor. So to begin with, we have the common NPN bipolar junction transistor right here. And if you don't already know the uh, pin layout, so flat side is basically facing us for both of them. And they have the same pin layout. So flat side is facing us. Left pin or bottom pin there is the emitter. The middle pin is the base. And the right pin or the top pin, however you're looking at it there, flat side facing you, is the collector. So same pin layout for that one. And you can see the middle pin, we have a 1 million ohm resistor. That is for uh, both of them. And so what we're going to do to begin with is look at our collector to emitter current or our base to emitter current and that is what we set to control how much is going how much current is going from collector to emitter but uh, we're going to give the same amount of current to both of them at least the same resistor there you can see we have 4.2 now that's micro amps so they're 1 million ohm resistors it's a 5 volt power supply and uh, this one is also four microamps and uh, looks like a spec less there's uh, two transistors in it so there's gonna be a little bit more voltage drop I'm surprised there's not a bigger difference but if I go to that resistor there you can see through the five million ohm resistor we are getting a uh, five mil microamps of current that's because they're one million ohms of resistance five volts divided by one million ohms is five millions or five microamps but you get a little drop with the transistors right there and uh, oddly enough okay that uh, actually kind of makes sense we have one less uh, diode drop right there but uh, that looks a little higher than it should be but in case they're about the same for the most part and they have about the same amount of current going through them so what we're going to do is add an LED to, uh, to both of them so the cathode, the short lead, is going to go to the transistor. I'll set it there. It's a little easier to see what we're wiring there. And uh, same with this one here. Cathode to the uh, collector right there. The anode up one row. And then we're going to add a resistor to the positive side of the power supply. So the collector is of the transistor and the Darlington pair. The collector side is the more positive side and uh, we put that there in relationship to the emitter and we're going to do the same thing right there resistor to the diode and then to the uh, rail now as soon as I think to do so definitely before we measure anything we got to put this from microamps to milliamps because as I already said a small base to emitter current allows a lot larger collector to emitter current so we're going to be in the milliamp range and at least very close worst case scenario and so let's measure the uh, current going through the NPN transistor so they're wired exactly the same we got one milliamp of current going through there right now now let's go to the uh, Darlington pair and you can see we got uh, 10.6 milliamps of current going through it and I'm pretty sure that the uh, Darlington pair transistor right now is saturated so it's uh, probably conducting as well as it is going to now what we're gonna do is uh, let's go back and uh, take a look again at this one especially you can see it's one milliamp of current we're gonna yank out the one million ohm resistors on both of them and replace them with two million ohm resistors right there from the uh, positive rail to the base of the transistors and so let's go to microamp quickly and just measure the uh, resistors for now because we already have the rest of the circuitry there you can see it's half of the current it was before remember it was about 4.7 with that resistor and uh, when it was a 1 million ohm resistor and then this one was uh, what was it? I think it was four microamps spot on. Now it's uh, 
microamps about that so now we got to put it back to milliamps before we go from the for the emitter current because it's going to be the resistor and the LED and uh, the transistor not saturated but a lot more or er, this one won't even be in the uh, milliamps yet we'll look at that so 0.5 milliamps so it's half of that one milliamp we had before and if we really need an accurate value since we know it's in the microamp range we can go to microamp and yeah 510 so it was uh, pretty much spot on now we have to go to the milliamp range so again still the exact same resistance going base to emitter and there you can see we have the same current that we had before I think it was 10.6 before but uh, now it's a uh, 10.5 uh, I could have been wrong let's we can actually put in the uh, 1 million again so even with the 2 million ohm resistor the, uh, the LED appears to be fully on as far as this transistor is concerned so yeah 10.6 so it was half the current though we got a very small fraction less and uh, that might be because the transistor got a little less warm or something there's uh, heat in different variables voltages and stuff they can uh, change the gain a bit but in any case you can see the Darlington pair just has a ton more of uh, gain than the uh, standard uh, NPN transistor so now we're going to put uh, let's put the 2 million ohm resistor back since that's what we have at uh, this one and let us finish the circuit to look at one of the properties so the Darlington pair transistor actually takes one transistor that amplifies the uh, signal and then uses a second NPN transistor to amplify the amplified signal so basically it's uh, kind of two transistors in a row that's uh, stuff you can look up later and uh, I didn't make a drawing or anything but we'll see here that if we go to the uh, base to emitter of the uh, NPN transistor it's about 0.6 volts that's because there's very low current right now if we used a lower value resistor it would go up to about 0.7 volts if we get low enough but it's 0 0.6 0 0.7 volts in that range now we go to the Darlington pair transistor and there you can see the uh, voltage drop is about twice as high that's because as I said before you use one transistor to basically amplify the signal and then the second transistor goes to the base of that one the signal from the first one and uh, so you got the base to emitter drop twice it has to go through the base to emitter twice so you get twice the uh, base to emitter drop but since they're two transistor you get a multiple of their two gains so in any case that's all stuff to read up on in the future main thing is you can use a Darlington pair if you need a lot more gain these two circuits are wired the same that LED is a lot brighter the Darlington pair transistor is saturated it is fully on as much as it can be and so it does have some uh, voltage across it so one diode drop whereas when the uh, NPN transistor is saturated I'm just gonna yank that out and grab the uh, 220 ohm resistor so the NPN transistor here now is extremely uh, it's full-blown saturated for sure and when we measure the voltage across it it's almost nothing so we have two diode drops from base to emitter with the Darlington pair but because one transistor feeds another one of those diode drops ends up being across the Darlington pair transistor as we just measured before whereas with the NPN transistor you have one diode drop from base to emitter which we can see right there since it is wired up and there you can see with this much current going through it's a 5 volt power supply and a 220 ohm resistor uh, I think it's what is it like 25 milliamps or something uh, but in any case with that much current going through it's the diode drop actually went up to uh, 0.8 volts but usually use a 
quite a bit higher value resistor, less current going based emitter, and the diode drops not as bad. But going across the transistor, there you can see we don't have any voltage drop, just a very, very small amount because there is a little bit of resistance and whatnot within the transistor. It doesn't conduct as perfectly as a piece of wire. But you can see sometimes even there's, if the wire is long enough especially, there'll be a voltage across it. And uh, there we go, we got rid of it if I held it. But uh, long enough wire, you're going to find a voltage across it because it does have a little resistance. So in any case, hopefully that all made sense and uh, you enjoyed the video. So thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.